Now let's use the test driven approach to make a table view. Now we're going to create a new project and make sure you click on unit test. Now we go to our test class and delete some of the function that we don't need. Now I'm going to write my first test to see if my view controller returns a table view. The first thing I want to do is create an instance of my view controller. I'm going to name it to do list view controller. And the compiler is telling me that I don't have the file. I'm in the class. So I'm going to create a new file and name it to do list view controller. Okay, and I'm going to open the view controller on my right side of my window. Going to delete some of the comments and f and functions that I don't need. The next line is important. I'm going to call a view for my view controller. What this do is call the view did low inside your view controller. You should not call the view did low directly, and this is how you should call it. Now I just need to check if there's a table view inside my view controller. Now I'm going to use the XCXR to test if my table view exists. And we're going to have an error because we don't have a table view. I'm going to create a variable for table view to get rid of the error. I'm going to run the test. As expected, the test failed. So now we just need to initialize the table view inside the view data. Okay, I'm gonna press Command U to run the test. We're not done yet because we need to create a table view inside our storyboard and control drag the our table view variable to the table view inside our storyboard. Now you need to change the name of your view controller to to do this view controller. And you need to add a IB outlet at IB outlet so you can drag the variable and link it to your table view inside your storyboard. Okay, we're ready to test it again. Now press the diamond in front of the function and it failed. This time we use a storyboard to initialize our table view. That means that we also have to use a storyboard to initialize our table view inside our test. Now I need information from the storyboard and use it to initialize my view controller. And to instantiate the view controller, you need to provide an identifier. I'll just use the name of my view controller. 
Also, when we instantiate the view controller, we are getting a generic view controller. So we have to downcast it to our specific class so we can access the elements within our class. And if you don't know what downcast means, for now, just think of it as we're, we're changing it to the class we're using. And we're ready to test. Using the test-driven development method, you really have to get comfortable reading these error messages because you're going to get a lot of them. Okay, we can read the first line. It said it's missing. It doesn't have an identifier. The good thing about writing these tests is that you don't really have to remember anything. The compiler will just tell you what you need to do or what you're missing. Now let's type in the view controller name and then run the test again. Alright, it passed. Now we can move on to our next test. So now we have a table view. Something need to control the table view. And that something is called a data source. So now we need to test if we have a data source that can control our table. So this test is going to be very similar to our first test with all the same code except the assert function. I'm going to test if the table view data source is the class that we have. And I'm going to call the class our data view provider. I'm going to call it to do list data provider. So I'm going to create a variable for our data provider and use the IB outlet because I'm going to connect that to our storyboard. And the reason for it is that we can use the storyboard to initialize our data provider class. And the compiler is telling us that we don't have a data provider class, so we need to create one. So let's give it a name, the, the one we use in our test class, and then it's a subclass of NS object. Okay, so we don't really have to do anything right now. The compiler will tell us what to do. Now we need to go to our storyboard because we want to use the storyboard to initialize our class. So we need to type in O and there's a cube here. We, can, we need to drag it out. We need to use it to initialize our class and link the class to the variable that we created. We need to change the class name of this cube to the name of our data provider class. So what this means is now we have a representation of our class inside our storyboard. And there are two ways to link the code to the storyboard by control drag here or from here to the cube. So I was pretty confused the first time because I never used the cube before. But this is just using the storyboard to create an instance of to do list data provider and put it in your data provider variable. So now we make a copy, I mean a reference to our class. So we're going to set a table view, the data source of the table view to the class we provided. And we're getting an error in our compiler. It's telling us that we need to conform it to a UI table view data source. So let's do that. Go to the class and put in UI table view data source
So the error said that uh, we didn't conform to protocol. And to make the compiler happy, we need to write out two table view functions. This first function is telling the table view how many rows you should create. And this function create a cell and insert it to the row. And for now, I'm making it to return an empty UI table view cell. The test pass. Now we need to refactor the code. And we want to change this to a UI table view data source because this is our data source. And when we change something, we need to test it. You might also want to refactor your test code. There are a few lines of code that are the same in both tests. And I'm going to take those to my setup. Once we're done refactoring our code, rewriting our code, we need to test it again and make sure everything passes. And for the next test, we're testing the delegate. We need both table view and delegate. And we need to change this data source to a delegate. And we need to set the delegate of the table view to our data provider, which is both a table view and a delegate. And it's giving us an error here. It's telling us that you need to set it to a table view delegate. And we can do it on top. And we can set it when we created the variable. Just add a UI table view delegate. And after we done all that, we can go ahead and test the test function. We passed the test, so there's one more function we need to write for this video. Since we're using the data source and the delegate, we want to make sure it's the same instance. So we're getting the data source and a delegate from our table view and set it back to our class and compare them both to see if they're one of the same. And the test passes. And that's it for this video. I'll continue with the table view tutorial in my next video. Thank you for watching.